Hello, everyone. My name is Jiang. Today, I will present improving CDM's EDPL based DSR performance by adding support for IP in IP. I'm from Baidance. Uh, CDM is open source software. It provides secure and observe network connectivity between container workloads. At Baidance, we deploy CDM on a few net edge network sites. We use it as a Kubernetes CNI to provide networking and replace the Kube routers. CDM has less CPU usage. In CDM, there are two networking modes. One is the SNAT source net mode. For the source net mode, the client sends the request to the VIP and it goes to the load balancer. The load balancer will replace the source IP with the load balancer IP and the destination IP as the port IP and reach the port. In the port reply, it also goes to the load balancer. The load balancer transmits the source IP to the VIP again. So that means every request will go to the load balancer. If there are lots of uh, nodes here, the load balancer may become a bottleneck. Another mode is DSR mode, or, or direct server return mode. In the DSR mode, the client sends the IP to the VIP as before, but load balancer does not change the stored IP this time. It will just forward tag it to the pod IP, to the pod with the pod IP. In the pod reply, they can use the current IP as the dash IP. That's the destination IP and send the request, send the reply directly to the client. So this benefit is that there's less processing on the load balancer. But the question is that uh, where do we store the VIP? On the current system, the implementation is that the VIP is, is stored in the IP options. The upper is the original IP ticket with the last protocol checksum and source IP and destination IP as the VIP. To forward the packet, we have to change the destination IP to the port IP. Then the CDM saves the original destination IP and port into the IP options. And this one will, will work, then works. But this one issue is that uh, the promise will be slow on, on some network switches. On network switch, there's also a fast pass and a slow pass. For the, for the IP packet with options, we we'll go to the slow pass on many switches. And that means the switch has to examine the IP option and see if it has anything to do with the switch or go to the control plan or not. So that means when the packet, when the, when the network traffic is even not very high, the CPU usage on the switch will arrive 100% and become the bottleneck. So the question is, can we do better? So for that, we propose the IP, IP for DSR um, for, for IPv4. So basically, we use IP in IP. That means we have two IP headers. Uh, we the the upper is original IP packet with the source IP and the destination IP as the VIP. Then we add another IP header as the outer IP header. The source IP is the load balancer IP, and the destination IP is the port IP. And there's no IP options this time. And in for the inner IP op, IP header, we Again, change the VIP to the port IP for the easy processing. And then we save the original destination IP and the destination part into IP options. But I think this IP option is the inner, is inner, the inner IP header. And the switch will not check the inner header. It will just check the outer, outer header of the IP header, outer IP header. And then it will go to the slow path on the switches and have the better performance. The only drawback is that the, the MTU has to be smaller because we add a 20, another IP header is about 20 bytes for the UTPs. For the TCP, because we only do this for TCP SIM packets, so that means only the TCP SIM packet has a smaller CPU. For other, for all the other packets, the TCP packet is still the same size. And that's all. Thank you very much.